So this is uh, from Forbes magazine, uh, written by Paul Idon. Date is August 13, 2020. Title of the article is Turkey is up against some formid formidable navies in the eastern Mediterranean. And actually some of it is pretty disturbing over here. Is that what you're going to see is that possible nations that could be involved. It's Greece and Turkey that's uh, taking the lead. But then some nations that could be involved could include China, Russia, Egypt, Israel, and then uh, maybe even America. So this is actually getting really, really big over here. So depending on how things go later on, maybe America would get more involved. But things are blowing up over here. Mainly what's going on is that because uh, everything is, everyone is competing uh, for the oil and they want to be rich through oil. Turkey wants to go into what Grecians think is their territory, but Turkey claims that they have the right to go over there so that they can find more oil. And then because of that, there is a conflict. And then each country, Turkey, Greece, they have their own allies. France is surprisingly getting involved over there. And some people who think Macron is the Antichrist candidate, it is kind of interesting how France is getting involved in that. But aside from that, this is a big play, is the Eastern Mediterranean Sea. And the Bible says that if you look at Daniel chapter 7, that basically that there are four beasts who rise up out of the sea at Daniel chapter 7 verse 2. Daniel spake and said, I saw in my vision by night, and behold, the four winds of the heavens strove upon the great sea. So this is a great sea, big sea. If Daniel's writing during that timeline, then what sea is he thinking about that's really great? And not only just great, but verse 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, where these world empire nations are uh, involved in this great sea. There's no doubt if you study history and today, the Mediterranean Sea. Notice that the Bible shows, as you keep reading that passage, that eventually the Antichrist is going to get out of that sea. Well, if you look at verse 7 over there. So the fourth beast comes out of the Mediterranean Sea, and then he's going to get involved. So this Mediterranean Sea is a hot spot, you got to realize. As a matter of fact, let me read some more articles over here who's getting involved. This is by the Jerusalem Post, title of the article, Russia Makes Moves in Syria and Cyprus, where Grecians claim would be their territory. CBS News, said, title of article, Russia vows to help Syria break through crippling U.S. sanctions. So notice Syria is getting involved here too in a different territory. This is by Reuters, title of the article. Israel says it expects Bahrain and Oman to follow UAE in formalizing ties. So during this time where the nations are getting more and more involved in conflict, remember that the peace that is growing through uh, Trump's presidency over here. UAE nations are getting involved and now they're including more, Bahrain and Oman. Now this perfectly matches with what the Bible says that when, there is, uh, when they cry out peace, then sudden destruction comes. It matches Revelation 6. The man conquering and to conquer to bring peace, but the next horse brings in war. So you see so much, so much of precursors showing over here where the Bible prophecy is coming into life eventually when we hit the tribulation. As a matter of fact, th this peace treaty that seems to be going pretty well and some people think that Trump is the, another Antichrist candidate. If that's the case, it's interesting that Forbes, they write out an article here, title of the article, Donald Trump nominated for Nobel Peace Prize. Here's what that actually means. How about that? Why? Because of that peace treaty deal that they were able to succeed with Israel and UAE. When will this date be held? Title of the article by the Jerusalem Post. UAE Israel deal signing ceremony to be held September 15th in Washington. So that's the date when, where they begin. What if that was the date of your rapture and things started turning? Now obviously it's going to have to be a little bit more than that. It's going to have to be, <laughs> it's going to have to be where the Antichrist himself, the Catholic Church has to get involved. So that's important to understand. 
But remember, uh, Donald Trump already has a lot of ties with Roman Catholicism. He graduated from Fordham. His wife is looks like also to be Catholic as well. So is, there might be something going on here. You never know. Now, while it's going on, chaos is also still growing. Remember about uh, the blast that was going on concerning about Iran? Remember that a long time ago? Some people think that it might have been planned. Some people think it may have been accidental. But now look at this one. This is by the Times of Israel. Title of the article is Iran claims it's identified saboteurs behind blast at nuclear site. So now they claim that they found out who it is. And because they're finding out who it is, originally it seemed like Iran may want more of a peace with Israel, especially with COVID-19. But if it was planned, so to speak, or whoever was involved, it made Iran do this, which is interesting. The title of the article by BBC News is Iran's Enriched Uranium Stockpile 10 Times Limit. Now remember, China was building up its, uh, its missiles, right? And then now Iran is getting involved. And then already you have USA and Russia who have the biggest ones. And I read you articles before that China would have been the top three now. But look at this. Now it's just going where the Bible says nation shall rise against what? Nation. Wow, something's about to happen. So notice that there's growing terms of peace as well as war. That so matches with the seals in Revelation 6. How the, it goes from peace and then to war after that. Now, if that's the case, we covered the first seal then, right? right over here and then the second seal is gonna have to be these wars going on over here then what has to follow right famine right the economy breaking down guess what this is by Financial Times the title of the article is this US stock bubble could rank among the biggest in history actually so there's, there's going to be a big blow up really soon over here. And what's interesting also is that, remember, the reason why Turkey and the other nations are involved in this Mediterranean Sea conflict had to do with oil to begin with. What did the Bible say about the third horseman? Uh, hurt not the what? Oil and the wine. Sure, that could be uh, where something edible as oil, but maybe the Bible is being prophetic in its application too. Sometimes the Bible does that to you. Sometimes the Bible does that to you. So this is getting really big over here, people. This is before the rapture. We're seeing all of this taking place. And then the peace, we're seeing it's heading toward it. It's heading toward it. And this one is about to uh, come out. Now, look at Mark chapter 13 then. Look at Mark chapter 13. What did the Bible say about the tribulation? It gives the order over here correctly. Look at this. So it goes from war, and then it goes down to the third seal, famine. Look at the order over here. Look at verse 7. And when ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars, be ye not troubled, for such things must needs be, but the end shall not be yet. See, rumors of war, okay? We're already hearing rumors of it, but, in the but this is tribulation application. That means it's going to get even more intense. So if you think today's intense, you've seen nothing yet. That's going to be troubling over here. Uh, for nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be earthquakes in diverse places and there shall be famines and troubles. Right? U.S. now is possibly facing the biggest uh, in history with their stock bubble bursting. And it says these are the beginnings of sorrow. That's the beginning of sorrows, the Bible says. If that's the case, what, ha what should happen then? Notice what Jesus ties to tribulation application. Now, you can see one application church, so this can go double application. 
More doctrinally, though, this will be tribulation. But let's see over here. Verse 9, But take heed to yourselves, for they shall deliver you up, God's saints, to councils and the synagogues. Ye shall be beaten, and ye shall be brought before rulers and kings for my sake, for a testimony against them. And the gospel must first be published among all nations. Uh, verse 11, But God saying, Have peace, don't worry about... Uh, this chaos and persecution against God's people because God will give you the words what to say. But this can be spiritually applied to Christians today. We see that so much today. Now look at verse 12. It becomes chaotic. They, you get rebel rousers who turn against God's people and they turn against each other. Verse 12. Now the brother shall betray the brother to death and the father the son and children shall rise up against their parents and shall cause them to be put to death. Who is this? Why? We see this one going on. They're going against God's people in these stupid riots, and they're all turning against each other, and the younger, younger generations are rebelling more against their older generations, children against parents. This is perfect over here. I mean, here's a, a video uh, by Breitbart, and you can look at the video. So they actually recorded this. It's, uh, it's BLM protesters yelling to the police that, Y'all are the murderers. Y'all need to start being killed like y'all kill us. Look at that. An another one over here. This is a, uh, a tweet by Andy Ngo, and he posted uh, this video where the they're all chanting, these B BLM rioters, who do we protect? Black criminals. Who do we protect? Black criminals. Another one over here. This is... Uh, on YouTube you can find, and this is insane, this is wicked. BL, uh, the title of this YouTube video is BLM Rioters in Charlotte Shout F.U. Jesus. That's what they said over here. That is just so stupid over there. And then another one over here, see how they're turning against God's people now, while they're all turning against each other. This is by WSOC TV, new, local news of Charlotte, so Charlotte itself. And there's this guy, which is pretty neat. I would advise you to watch him, Sam Bethea, but it's so cool. He has this little bi uh, bicycle thing, and then he'll ride around town with, on the back saying, Jesus says he's got drinks light out. And he's been, uh, he's been known throughout that city where he would go around saying, Jesus saves and tried to give them the gospel. He used to be uh, imprisoned, I think, or had a criminal record, but Jesus changed his life. But then, what, the, what did the BLM rioters do? Title of this article at this local news, Man known for booming Jesus saves message doused with flour, glitter by protesters. And some said they even uh, put, oh, what do you call that thing? That doodle paint thing, you know? So, silly string. Yeah, silly string. They also silly stringed him. They did urine too. How about that? Urine. How about that? That's a surprise. These people are wicked people, you got to understand. They're not about love and peace. They're satanic. This is uh, the title of this article over here. And uh, this is uh, CNBC News, I believe. I believe. The title of the article over here, it gets so out of hand. They're turning against each other, right? That's what Mark 13 mentioned. Title of this article, Rochester Police Chief. Entire command staff stepped down following death of Daniel Prude. So another person. See, they want to find every person who suffered uh, police brutality, so to speak, and then uh, turn against their system and society. Do we believe in police brutality? Of course not. And yeah, there should be emendations. But this thing is just carrying too far where you notice that they're now, they're more sympathetic toward the criminals than the police whose job is to protect you. Sure, both sides have problems and you can point out both sides, but when you weigh both sides, you know who's got a longer rap sheet, so to speak. But look at the news, what are they concentrating more on sympathy, huh? That's, that's, that's a warped mind over here. Now because of this chaos, Forbes uh, has an article here, title, Why Rich Americans Are Fleeing to the Caribbean This Winter. You know why? Because they mention over here because of the, you know why? Because of these idiots over here. And then the government taking more and more control where businesses are running out. 
So they mentioned, so these people said this, the reason why they're fleeing is because they're afraid of the November election. And when that November election comes out, guess what, man? You ain't seen nothing yet, man. That's why they're all running away. There's a lot of good, honest uh, businessmen with integrity. I'm not talking about really rich, filthy people. Sure, a lot of them are corrupt, but I'm talking about people who run local business stores that have been ruined because these stupid rioters over here. And they moved out. So what did the Bible say? Did the Bible say that people would flee? Actually, yeah, because it, with all this chaos, the natural reaction is, I want to run away. So look what the Bible prophesied at the tribulation. They would do the same thing. Verse 14, But when he shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, standing where it ought not. So maybe like an election, so to speak, right? Like an election that the Antichrist is going to set up where he rules. Kind of like that, right? Mm. But anyway, keep reading. When that election comes out, then let them that be in Judea where? Flee to the mountains. They run away because they know that something big is going to happen. All right, so obviously I'm not saying all these things are happening right now and it's fulfilling Mark 13, but all these things are stepping stones where you're seeing Mark 13, that pieces of it is like, yeah, it's predictable that this is what's going to happen. These are logical steps of what's going to happen. It's going to be peace, war, and then economic collapse, chaos against each other, and people running away when some, somebody gets elected over here. Mm. But let's see the next part. Now, this is what I find interesting, all right? What's going to happen at the tribulation? Uh, look at verse 17. But woe to them that are with child and to them that what? Give suck in those days. There's something about little children here or babies that's going to be a great danger to them. Could it be that younger generations are in greater danger as these stepping stones are building up more and more? Yes. Here's a stupid one by your stupid city, San Francisco Chronicle. Title of the article is California Bill Eliminating Sex Offender List Inequity Toward LGBTQ People Passes. What did they mean by that? This is what they mean by this stupid senator. SB 145 by State Senator Scott Weiner, uh, Democrat San Francisco, would remove automatic sex offender registration for young adults who are convicted of having anal or oral sex with a minor, leaving the decision up to a judge. Newsom has until the end of September to act on the measure. Before it was criminalized over here. They, they penalized this, but now they're like, this is uh, unequal over here. Equal. This is man this is pure wickedness over here now what else could probably happen due to this uh, rise of evil what does this have to tie with the young the babies over here there might be something else that's also interesting as we talk about the babies and the little children but uh, before I come to that over here let me read a few things over here all right first of all I want to mention over here uh, some of the people who already know about this. Some of you have already heard about the big thing, and MacArthur all, also mentioned this in a video, about 94% uh, about the COVID death had underlying medical conditions. The smaller percentage we know for certain died due to solely COVID cases. So that's been a big thing over there. Another thing over here is, uh, I don't know if you knew this, but if you look at the WHO website, they actually mentioned about this vaccine uh, at Africa where polio outbreaks started to come out. So remember, your pastor over here, he's, he's always going to look at all the arguments so that he wouldn't be considered a fool. So what you got to understand is that those two points that a lot of conspiracy researchers have dug up and trumped about, and even John MacArthur himself, you got to realize some of the critics' argument. One of the, some of the critics, what they'll argue is this, is that the 94 percentage doesn't mean that COVID is a small thing. What it means, they claim, is that because of these underlying medical conditions involved with COVID, it's because of COVID itself, that's why these underlying medical conditions have happened. But it's interesting when I read science journals, it goes like both sides either way. One of them said that it's not proven yet, actually. So one of the science journals that I read. But it goes either or. 
See, so you got to be careful when you go into conspiracy murky waters, all right? You can't do absolutes on that one. Also, concerning about the polio outbreak, which was very, very interesting, but the thing is this, in basic science procedure concerning vaccines, the reason why third world countries like that place had a, uh, an outbreak in polio is because of lack of sanitation to begin with. So vaccines would work with people who are more healthy prone, so to speak, who had more sanitation methods. But those who had lack of sanitation, that's why they would have a, uh, certain consequences that come out like polio outbreak. So you got to realize that's what the critic side might argue. So I'm not agreeing with the critics. I'm not agreeing with the conspiracy side either. I'm just saying that uh, when you look at all sides of the argument, you want to be more informed. My job is to inform you with truth, right? That's the idea, making you informed. So I'm going to give you all the information over there. And so that people don't uh, criticize me that I'm quoting conspiracy theory sources, you notice everything that I quoted to you is everything that's internationally recognized by people as sources for news, uh, articles, etc. Now, uh, came out. <laughs> so CNN's article... Bill Nye breaks down the reason why we should all wear a face mask. And he was going on TikTok, talking about all this kind of stuff. There's another one. Now, this is ridiculous. CNN posted an article. A doctor runs, uh, title of the article, a doctor runs 22 miles in a face mask to prove that they are safe. So, <laughs> so we can see that uh, the one side over here, that they, they can argue over here that these masks, and these mandatory restrictions that they're not as bad as you think but I don't believe that easily either because uh, here's something interesting on the other side title of this video this is by CNN too I'm giving I told you CNN's articles right that are trying to support the mask thing CNN itself admitted in their uh, in their YouTube video here title of this CNN video CNN investigates Sweden's controversial COVID-19 strategy now, remember one of the famous epidemiologists that I quoted a long, long time ago, where he mentioned that he didn't like about these, uh, a lot of these mandatory uh, restrictions, the governmental methods, the distancing, I believe, et cetera, et cetera. Well, it looked like it paid off over here. As a matter of fact, it paid off that even uh, a lot of people, like this one person, posted an article here, Sweden close to victory over coronavirus, never had a lockdown or mask mandate over there. So which is pretty interesting. Uh, here's another one over here. Another one, now this one I would highly recommend. You'd all want to watch this one. This is from an independent fundamental Baptist church, Clarence Sexton. Clarence Sexton had this doctor, his name is Dr. Matthew Whiteside. He majored in nanoscience actually. He got his uh, PhD in chemical ecology, if I recall, from UC Irvine over here. Now, the title of this YouTube video is called Settled Science, The Truth Behind COVID-19. So, uh, so this is actually from an independent, fundamental Baptist church, and they had the scientist speak. And this guy is a creationist, uh, believes in only using the King James Bible. I don't know if he's hardcore as we are, but he's independent fundamental Baptist too. So I would highly recommend listening to his stuff. And he makes it like so much broken down that a simpleton could understand. So he did it deliberately that way. But he mentioned this, and this one is actually not a secret. A lot of you probably know this by now, but some vaccines, if not a lot of vaccines, they use aborted babies for their vaccines. And actually, it, if, uh, it became such a big thing. If you don't think that's a big thing, even the Catholic uh, organization got involved where they were protesting to the government and asked them not to involve uh, aborted ba babies, the tissues, for the vaccines. In fact, Trump has a Operation Warp Speed. That's why, remember in the last End Times and Demons video I told you, is that they're pushing it for November, the vaccine. In this Operation Warp Speed, what helps with the speeding process is obviously see that uh, aborted baby, so to speak. That's one of the ways. I'm sure they're going to probably try to find other ways because the public feels so troubled about it. But this is from Science Mag. Science Mag itself, okay? Very prestigious. They mention here, t title of this article, Abortion Opponents Protest COVID-19 Vaccines Use of Fetal Cells. 
So uh, now this is troubling over here where they were speeding up the process with Operation Warp Speed. So some of them were speaking out, especially the, ca the Catholic people, because they're big on abortion thing over here. So then they got involved and they were trying to say, don't involve aborted babies over here with this va vaccination. Here are the following organizations, which is interesting. One of them is, believe it or not, it's no surprise, Beijing Institute of Biotechnology. China, of course, of course, we already knew that. University of Oxford is also involved. Uh, let's see, Jans and Research, uh, Janssen Research and Development USA. Another one is by the University of Pittsburgh. The other one is Immunity Bio uh, NantQuest. I think that's how you pronounce that. So the, what if, let me show you something, if this involves babies over here, why would the Bible say back at this verse 17, woe to them that are with child and give suck in those days? If, if, I'm not saying this is 666, but I definitely believe this is making a way for it eventually. What if the mark of the beast, they use babies of tribulation saints Imagine they cut off the head of these tribulation saint pregnant women and they want to, they want to, uh, they, there is controversy about criminals using their body for uh, helping out the government, governmental resources. What if they take the fetal tissue or whatever from the tribulation pregnant woman saint's body and use it for the bang, bang, bang? What if? But this guy... Dr. Matthew Whiteside, whose, whose specialty is in nanoscience, he mentioned this. This is not a secret, and you all knew this from a long time ago. But he says, uh, I believe he mentioned MIT. He quoted this, the source. He said that they, have that, uh, they are using nanoparticles for their vaccination thing right now, right now. But they're just waiting. And then, once, and then they insert the vaccine over here. But then what happens is that he mentioned that uh, these nanoparticles that they light up. So then why? Because they want to keep track of who has the mark or not, actually. So then it makes it easier through the process because um, the, the scientists mentioned that the University of Tennessee, they don't allow students in without the vaccine. Imagine one day that they don't let you in until you have that mark of the beast because to protect the public safety. But in order to know it, it needs to light up. And he mentioned you could use like a typical cell phone device and easily see it and it will light up. Ah, yikes. What did the Bible say in Revelation 13? A what? Mark in your right hand or in your forehead. Okay, food for thought. <laughs>